So CN is actually social inclusion of adults through entrepreneurship. Um, and this idea was brought up by some of the partners um, around four years ago. And we did this K3 um, application. And if you don't know K3 and the Erasmus program, this is a project that works with um, policy changes. So it's not about doing a lot of um, experimental um, things, working with um, you know guidebooks and what you could imagine in, in Erasmus project, but it's about changing policies, uh, European policies. Uh, the partnership consists of um, five different countries. In Denmark, we have two partners, VUC um, Storsson that I present, and VUC um, or HF and VUC FU. They are, or we are both uh, adult education. We provide general adult education, so basic education for adults, not um, until high school level. So it's. Um, no academics um, teaching, you could say. Ireland is represented by the Universal Learning System, and uh, Norway by Phoenix, and Germany, where we are today, Pedagogische Hochschule Freiburg, and in Italy, uh, Archivio della Memoria. We have been visiting all these um, partners. This is the last visit, as Francisca said, and uh, we are very happy to be here today. So actually, you already mentioned the purpose or the aim of the project, so I wouldn't go through it once more. But the main outputs of this uh, project will be uh, five different uh, national policy briefs, one from each country. EU recommendations, so we try to gather what have we found out from these five countries. Can we make some general recommendations to all over Europe? It seems so. Actually, Alina will present some of them later. And then we have a big collection of capacity building materials. All five con uh, conferences have been recorded, uh, presentations have been um, stored and shared, and you can find everything on um, both the SEAT webpage and later on also the, or right now it's also on the Internet webpage, and this will um, remain there. So there is a lot of presentation, a lot of knowledge. You could watch them for free. Everything what we have been talking on in these five countries will be presented um, in the capacity building materials. So uh, the conferences had quite different um, prospects uh, all over Europe. So we started out in Denmark, and that was actually during the uh, COVID <laughs> pandemic. So. It was a bit difficult to actually make uh, conferences at that time, but we, we managed to, to do actually two conferences because we couldn't gather too many people, so we split it up. And we worked on, um, or we were presented to how entrepreneurship, um, education, or support normally would follow the structures of educational level. So the higher level of education, the higher level of support to be an entrepreneur. That's really the main point from the Danes. Then what was new for us, at least for our institution, was that so entrepreneurship could also be social entrepreneurship. And in Denmark, we have worked a lot more with this um, perspective on, of, of entrepreneurship education. And then what was the main thing or what we maybe also knew from the beginning is that in Denmark at least uh, entrepreneurship education is not a part of the general adult education. The teachers do not have the competences like you also spoke about. They do not know what is entrepreneurship competences. So of course it's very difficult also to teach the students about these uh, things. In Italy it was a bit different what the perspective were. So we were very much into um, talking about the financial part of entrepreneurship also and uh, social innovation. So we saw a lot of um, examples on how social innovation can lead to education or to be self, um, 
like you say, um, self-financed. So actually get a, a, a work up after being involved in social innovation projects. Um, and then what was very interesting is that we also worked on how the, um, the entrepreneurship competences are part of soft skills competences, which is a really big phenomenon right now in, in Europe. Micro credentials are a big issue for the European Union. In Ireland, it was another perspective, it was an economic perspective. Um, and we saw a lot of uh, examples of how migrants were um, uh, working with um, different projects, how they could um, be self-employed um, by during entrepreneurship. So this was a very big issue there. And the Norwegians, they had a totally other prospect also because the Norwegian support system is very different from actually the rest of us. And um, what we saw there, and that is something that I think might consider all of Europe, is that women is, um, the number of women in entrepreneurship is very low. And even though Norway provides really good support, and um, as I've written, you could actually stay on social benefits, even though you have a startup company and you earn money, you can still have your social benefits um, within or for one year after you have started out your business. So the, the support is very, very, very good in Norway. And what we will see today, it's, it's going to be exciting what we will see from Germany, but it's certainly a different perspective again, and um, we will make our recommendation out of this. What uh, Francisca also mentioned was the end net. So this is also a reason why we are here today, because when we meet, we talk, people are social, and the, the EndNet is an um, entrepreneurship network, or a network for um, entrepreneurship in adult education. And right now, you will actually, on the EndNet webpage, find a lot of different things, training materials, examples of how you can do entrepreneurship education, uh, disseminations from the conferences, all the videos, all the presentations are there, different case studies, and then it's also a meeting place for all of us or everybody interested in entrepreneurship education. Right now we have 30 members from seven different countries, and um, they are consisting of <coughs> very Different, um, uh, different kind of partners, uh, adult education centers, different companies working with social innovation or social inclusion, um, entrepreneurship foundations, uh, and also universities of applied sciences from different countries, uh, and labor market centers. So it's quite different, dif um, that quite the diverse number of, um, yeah, thank you, um, of partners or members of this Enfit. And we hope today that you will join Enfit also, so we can keep on working on this network and maintain the knowledge about entrepreneurship education in this. I put out the paper, the paper with the web address here on the table. Yeah. <laughs> so this was uh, what we have been working on in this year. The project will end in two months. So this is indeed the last conference and we will be working hard to finalize the project um, before the end of November. Uh, if you would like to see more, you can look into the SEAT webpage, it's SEAT.eu. And we also have a LinkedIn and a Facebook um, uh, site, uh, both places, and you can follow the blog post. And the partners in this uh, partnership actually also sh um, shares a lot of other blog posts about what is going on in this field in all over Europe. So kind of a place to follow for social entrepreneurship and <coughs> entrepreneurship education.